Good morning. There's a cast in there somewhere. Mark broke his wrist. No way. Are you kidding? How many water leaks have I had because of that? You mad, bro? We literally had a dumpster fire. Good morning. We are starting this day off much better with no floods like yesterday. Chris and I are going to weigh our market lambs. This will be the second last weight. Uh, we are going to drop them down to 100 pounds. We usually do 105. We're going to go down to 100 and then whatever's left after today will all get shipped next week and that will be it. They'll be our tail enders. So we're hoping we'll have a good crew this week. And she's already at it. I don't even need to be here. Out the door. Oh, they did. They did. So neither one of us have yeah. to be here. Yeah. Perfect. No, why do you turn around right when you're at the door? Yeah. Go. That's your ball, baby, isn't it? There's a couple of lights. I'm not too sure which one now. You like it. Nope. Oh, sorry. Like, <laughs> yeah. needs to last. Or is it last week? Twenty six already, wow. <laughs> Good morning. Happy, happy. One pail, you guys. Maybe I'll put it on the ground. There. Nothing more in there, honey. Big mama strut. Oh, they're already in here. <laughs> Get out of the way. Oh, she's such a bully. Looks like only four. Tomatoes. Tomatoes is outside. I got it, yeah. Eating all the grain. I don't know what's no, because I know that's what I, I figured think. the uh Oh no, it's Billy's mom. Oh Billy's mom's oh yeah, you're right. The black one. Is she eating it? <laughs> yeah, she's coming. Billy's mom! Hi, sweetie. So what are they doing? They're eating without you. Go get them. Go get them. I know, you're in charge. She's been a lot better too, actually. Yeah. Thank God. They're so curious. I know they are. Oh, she's back. <laughs> well, she's the most alert out of all of them, I find. Oh, she always, yeah. Like, she just doesn't miss a beat. Do ya? You have to know what's going on all the time. High alert. Her eyes, even they're just so, it's so wide. <laughs> and her ears. Yeah. Yeah, she's just very alert. Patient number one, oh, yeah. and our newest patient number two. Here, let me have the evidence. <laughs> Show them what you did. I haven't told them yet. It's 
It's kind of hard because it's stuck, but there's a cast in there somewhere. Mark broke his wrist. He fell he out of... Some stitches too. And he got seven stitches in his chin. And a bruised ego and lots of bruising in a knee nice. and on a thigh. He and fell... I cracked the screen on my phone. Yeah, the phone is... Um, he was top step of the ladder up to the loft and it kicked out. So he hit the floor. I think we need some uh, ladder safety around here. Looking at heights. <laughs> Wasn't right? even this new one. It was the stupid old one. That was an extended lunch I was not prepared for. Uh, yeah, poor Mark. That's two hospital visits in like less than a week, so... I am, uh, I'm just wondering if it's Friday yet, and it's not. It is only Wednesday. It has been a very long week. He literally has to go back to the place where he went for his finger for uh, physio and stuff at the hospital in London, hand and arm doctor, upper limb doctor. Uh, so the doctor in Emerge figures it's, uh, it didn't need setting. It looks like a, a clean fracture or break or whatever, um, but that it was going to be up to these guys in London. So we're going to have to wait for a call. We are not waiting three months like he did on his finger. Uh, he said he will call tomorrow. So I think he's learned his lesson that you can't let things like broken bones or crushed tendons go untreated for too long or you're in for more work. And he knows that the window is getting a little tighter with uh, spring planting around the corner. So anyway, he is okay. He's got a heck of a wallop on his head. He, he was on the top rung of the ladder. He was going to start cutting pieces for our floor. He actually knew. He said, oh, the new floor will be slippy. So instead of the new ladder, I'll still use the old one because it's got rubber on the bottom or plastic on the bottom. And he said as soon as he got to the top, he's like, this is going to go. And it went, kicked out. He went for a tumble and he said all he knew is he's like, I tried to grab the post to save my fall. It wasn't happening. And he said he just turtled, which... I never do. I always try to save myself and then I break bones. So he's much, he's a m more graceful uh, tumbler than I am apparently. However, uh, yes, he is, he is turning 50 this year and this is his first broken bone. He's never broken bone in his body before in his whole life. So uh, he went back, we met, went back and just made sure the cabin was locked up and everything was put away. And then he noticed his brand new floor has a big crack where he fell. So he fell hard. So now he's just, he's very depressed. He's very upset about his floor because it's right in the middle. So like to take out click flooring, I don't know how that's going to happen. So I told him just to put a rug over it, but he didn't like that solution. <laughs> that's my solution. Anyways, this morning I was actually coming up to the office to talk to you guys and then I got the call. So it got, it got cut short. We ended up with 39 lambs. I did not need to take 100 pounders. There's probably lots over 105. I don't know what it is about this group, but they they finally just went bananas this last two weeks. Um, every other group I've weighed, I've been like, what is going on? What is going on? And then they just skyrocketed. So I don't know if maybe that cold weather brought on a little more of an appetite. January was fairly warm. And people are like, oh, they've probably used up too much energy fighting off the cold. I'm like, actually, it's been warm in January. I think it almost did the reverse. It almost acted like there were summer lambs, which is weird. Like, it wasn't that warm, but it wasn't winter either. So this last blast of cold, I think, made them hungry to keep warm. Maybe. That's my very uneducated guess. All right, so we had 39 lambs. Um, now, if you remember, my scale's off on a 25-pound weight. It was off um, like a half a pound, so we figure even if we're over 98 pounds, we're pretty close to the 100 pounds. All right, 39 lambs, so the minimum weight was 99 pounds, and uh, our max was 121 for an average of 108 pounds, which is a nice, a nice group. That's a nice average weight for me. I like having them in that weight range. It is a perfect day for drying this barn out as well. Like, the floor is almost completely dry. I cannot believe I was scraping out like a couple inches of water last night at 8.30. Yeah, it does dry up real nice in here. It's sunny and the curtains are open. That helps on a February day. All right, I want to show you a little hack that Carrie on Instagram sent me. So these plugs that I've been kind of struggling with, she says she puts them on the inside of the, of the drinker. And I'm like, what? That is 
brilliant. Why hasn't anyone ever told me that? Like the manufacturers didn't tell me that. So I'm going to experiment with one. I'm trying to figure out which one I should do. That one looks like it's snug in there. I'm not going to touch it. I have to kind of pick which one. I don't want to, I don't want, also don't want to try on one that doesn't really need it. Maybe we'll try this one because it's right at the front. It's okay, boys. Lucky. <laughs> He's not moving for anybody. All right, let's see it. Get this one. No way. No way. Are you kidding? That is brilliant. Oh my goodness. You know what? Maybe that was the way it was supposed to be all along. Hmm. All right, maybe all this time I had them in wrong. Interesting. That works. I'm changing. Wow. Thank you, Carrie. How long have I had these and I didn't know? How many water leaks have I had because of that? Oh my goodness. Huge, huge thank you to Carrie for sending me that little tidbit of information. I don't know why I didn't know that. I do have some replacement ones that don't look the same though. So uh, Carissa looks like she's got them jammed right in there. Like I don't even know if I'll get them out. So they're going to stay, but I may just go quick and uh, turn around the rest of the barn. But oh my goodness, 11 years. I've had these wools for 11 years. I had no idea. I wanted to check the markets with you guys again this week. Uh, these ones, because I know the weight, I know the average weight is 108 on these, and I can kind of give you what the prices did yesterday in Kitchener, just for an idea for those that are, some people are actually really interested in how our lambs are priced over here in Canada, just at an auction barn. It's looking like a 102 pound lamb is selling yesterday for 242 42. Uh, so I think I put this in a caption last time, but I didn't really talk about it. Our weights, our prices in Ontario based on uh, 100 weights, which means uh, for every 100, for a 100 pound lamb, that would be like $2.42 a pound. So I like, that's part of the reason I do 100 pound lambs, because I'm like, it's easy math when I look at it. It's like, oh, $242 minus deductions quite a few deductions when you take them to well probably anywhere that's what the markets are doing we're gonna drop these guys off and then uh, get home I'm actually a little bit later tonight but the days are getting longer so I don't even mind it's a nice sunny day and I'm not fighting winter which is always a bonus with a trailer full of lambs I just got home and while I was in the truck 
Mark called me all like out of breath and I'm like, it sounded like he was on Bluetooth. I'm like, I left you on the couch. What is going on? He goes, it's been a little bit of excitement here. I'm like, like what else? What else could have possibly happened? Well, we, uh, we literally had a dumpster fire. So apparently Mark had some um, rags that he threw in the garbage because he didn't want to keep them in the shop. Uh, rags that he used to do the um, stain on all our furniture and stuff for the cabin. And uh, she's an inferno. Oh my goodness gracious. I think we're going to need a new dumpster. Unbelievable. Like we can't make this stuff up as much as I would love to. Oh, our lids are burnt off. <laughs> yep, lids are gone. Unbelievable. My mom's brother's 50th. Oh, yeah. On make a path to the ram pen and a path to the center alley. How's that sound? Good morning everyone. Hopefully it's going to be a much better day today. Uh, when you end your day with a dumpster fire, it's pretty much the universe telling you, okay, here's your laugh for the night. Um, but yeah, this morning is the, another divorce for my boys and my girls. So it's taken us a bit just to figure out who we're gonna put where. We wanna keep the ewe lambs together. I usually keep them together maybe a week or two before they lamb. That's when I will maybe put them in with the mature ewes. Anyway, we're gonna pull out these boys and the girls and uh, we'll maybe rearrange them after we're done because it's too chaotic in the moment. Now for my, what's that? Two boys up front. Thank God. William, are you all good?
sorry, we finished that up, but I have to print off the new feed sheet for Carissa here quick. I also think last night, I think I dislocated my pinky. Boohoo, I know, but she's kind of ugly. Oh, eh, both my pinkies are ugly, but I can't bend it. Can't bend it. I can bend that one. I can't bend that one. Anyway, if that's the only catastrophe today, we're doing well. There's one other thing I'm doing to be a little more proactive. These ewe lambs, so Willow's group, is not in my flock watch system yet, and I'm like, I could do it one at a time and enter them and probably screw up, or I could download off my Gallagher, throw it onto Excel, get them all sorted, put what columns I want, and actually just forward that to Flockwatch, and they will put they will put it on my system for me. So I'm just uh, emailing Michael now with my attachment. So that's the one thing, and a lot of people have asked, like, they should be easily able to take your Gallagher stuff. They can, absolutely. Um, sometimes I'm not patient enough, and I want to do the task that I started doing, like, in that moment. Uh, but right now I'm like, well, I just pulled those rams out, so I'm in no real hurry because they're not scanned, they're not anything. I just was like, I'm going to put them in their group now and have it all organized. And I even did a couple more columns. I did a column of who they were bred to, so what group of rams they were bred to, um, when I added the rams, and when the expected due date is. I know they have those uh, columns in the, in the flock watch system, so I know that will match. So it's just getting to know both systems and what will transfer over easily, um, and then basically just sort it in Excel and send it send it their way. So I'm doing that right now. Thought I would show you the configuration of this side of the barn now that we've got the boys moved out. Usually the boys are right here, and I actually did that little wraparound number that we did with the breeding groups uh, because between the ewe lambs and the mature ewes, there was 118 animals, um, which would probably fit on this side. I think each line could fit like 125 easily, but to give them room, we have, we have a ton of room right now. Um, I thought just to make sure everybody had lots, we would just uh, put the girls sort of the front of this pen and then wrap it in front of theirs. The boys have a huge pen, which I hope will help keep their litter a little drier. The boys, for whatever reason, need bedded every day. I don't know if they drink more. They're, they're bigger animals, so likely they do. Um, and then, yeah, the mature ewes. There's 52 mature ewes at the back. I think it's like 52 and 66, something like that, if the math works. And they have a ton of room back at the back. So that's how we kind of configured it today. Um, I was hoping to lice treat these ladies. I actually have to start that whole process over again because I missed their second one because they're getting bred. I didn't want to have to, I didn't want to go in and kind of disturb them mid-go. So the initial one has to be done and then the second one has to be done two weeks later and I missed that second one. So I'll, re I'll reboot the process. But yeah, the week has turned around. First we had to find the one gate I did not do up. Not a toy. Excuse me. Excuse me, please. Excuse me, please. You mad, bro? Yeah. You look sad. It's kind of look like Eeyore today. It's an Eeyore kind of day, too. <laughs> How's my boy? You look good, buddy. William's looking good over there. Taking care of business. Hello, Willow. Well, how was your first experience? Tell me all about it. Did he treat you like a lady? 
Did he buy you flowers? You know what, Willow? You can buy yourself flowers. <laughs>